Welcome to the official Glory Podcast. I'm your host, Todd Grisham, and our special guest today, none other than Antoine Pito. Uh, Give it up. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Tighten those in. <laughs> of course, my cohort, Joseph Altolini, former welterweight champion of the world. Antoine getting geared up for Glory 44. You're in a contender tournament. Yep. Give us your thoughts and your mindset right now. Uh, I'm just, I'm ready now. I can't wait. I've been training pretty good for this fight, and... I just can't wait. The last time we saw you was also in Chicago. Yeah. You fought Richard Abraham. Yep. You came out on the winning end of that uh, fight. We we were interviewing you. He came walking in the room. I thought you guys were about to go at it again. <laughs> nah, man. Strictly business. Oh, yeah? Strictly yeah, business. but let's be honest. Who instigated it a little bit? I'm always stirring this Yeah, pot. he's trying I to like stir that. the pot. He was trying to get exactly. you guys that going. That was you. Yeah. 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 He's That's the instigator, right? It's not like, yeah, he walked in. I was wondering if something would happen. You try to oh, make something happen. I was sitting so. right beside him. I seen a smile just go <laughs> up, and you just saw Speaking it. Speaking of instigating, hey, you've seen him fight. He's a former welterweight champion. Oh, here we go. Well, what would happen if you two got in the ring today? You know, he was good, but at his time, I oh. think like it's a different time now. So, yes. you know. Yes! But oh. I would say the same thing to every – it's no disrespect, but I would say the same thing to every single champion's – at their prime, mm -hmm. they were be the best, but at their prime. And it's impossible to compare for as in today because I just feel like every single sports just evolves so fast. And I just feel like it's 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 complicated to compare like a champion of yesterday to a champion from today. So yeah. what, what do you think about that, Joe? Well, I don't think I actually hit my prime in kickboxing before I had to give up. What are you, 32 now? Yeah. Yeah, you could still go, right? Well, yeah. yeah. I'm doing a different approach. No, see. But, uh, yeah, no, it would be, a, I think it would be a, a, a good fight because it's like, stylistically, it would yeah. make a good fight because he'd want to keep me away with his kicks and try to keep me at distance. But what made me so successful is the exact opposite, being able to put pressure. So um, I think it would be a good, awesome fight. Now, you obviously, you. you obviously want to be a champion one day. The current champion, yeah. Cedric Dumbay, yep. squaring off against Myrtle Grunhart in our main event at Glory 44. Yeah. Break that matchup down for us. I think it's going to be a really good fight. Uh, both of them are obviously really uh, hungry. I think that Myrtle really wants the title. He fought for the title, like, what, two times? Yeah, twice. Two uh, twice already. So I'm pretty sure he's going to go for it. But personally, I don't think that he's going to be able to go through Dumbe. I mean, you're looking at a fighter like Dumbe. He's only getting better every single fight. The first time he fought against Grunhardt, I don't think he was half as good as he is now. And and look at how much better he's he's become. And and he's only just getting better every single fight. When on the other hand, you got Myrtle, he's been fighting the same way for the past 10 years. So I think that he's Dumbe getting better every single fight and he already beat that guy. It's kind of like, what is he going to bring to the table that Dumbe hasn't seen before? You I mean, know what I mean? When he fought Nikki, I think that Nikki was that more one-dimensional style, yeah. and Dumbe just, you know, was able to pick him apart. Where I think because, um, you know, Myrtle's a little bit more unorthodox, it yeah. could give him a harder fight. What do you think? But, but I think we already saw what happened in the first, in the first fight, right? And I don't think it's going to be... I think it's going to be messy, man, because... I, I think so, too. I think it's going to be really, really, really messy because I, I think that Dumbe kind of likes the fighters that don't move too much and just goes forward. Mm -hmm. I think he likes because he can use movements, but Myrtle is kind of like, you don't really know about his footwork. He might just jump on you yeah. or go slow. You think or, he's out, he's exhausted. Yeah, and exactly. And then I, th I think it's going to be, it's going to be pretty messy, but, but I still think that Dumbe is going to come out on top. As far as your tournament, uh, we like the prediction. We like when people predict something. Sometimes guys yeah. come on the show, they don't want to ruffle any feathers. I like the fact you made a prediction. What do you think is going to happen in the tournament? Obviously, you feel strongly about your first match. Yeah. Who do you think you meet in the final? I think it's going to be really difficult because uh, Harrod versus Ben Mansour, they're two really good fighters. Clash of style again. Uh, Harrod, very powerful power puncher. He likes to go forward. He likes to put his opponent on the ropes and hit them like that. And on the other side, Ben Mansour, he's, he's a great boxer. He's got a good footwork. He likes to move around, use a lot of different techniques, but he's not as powerful so I think it's going to be a really good fight. Uh, I don't think he's going to get knocked out. I think it's going to go two points, and it's just going to be about who can hit the other one more, I think. What do you think would be a better stylistically, like a match for you that's going to be more exciting or one that you'd rather see than the other? For me, I, to, to be honest, I don't really care. I feel like I'm confident fighting both of these fighters. It would be totally different fights, obviously, if I face one or another, but I'm ready to fight both, and I, I, I don't really care. I've... I've gotten ready for 
to face both of them, and I, I know what I have to do if I face both of them. Now, different fighters have different approaches. Did you yeah. figure out, have you fought in a tournament before one, and yeah. how are you approaching it? Do you want to get rid of that first fight first, yeah. or are you going to play a little bit more cautious in the first? Do you have a set plan, or are you just going to go in and yeah. you know, be well, pinto? You, you, you have to. You, you have to always be prepared and, and be ready. I've fought in tournaments before. I've fought in eight-man tournaments that I've won before, which is one, one, yeah. one extra fight. And... Uh, yeah, you, you, you have to be ready for it. Like, uh, But to me, I like to take it one fight at a time. A lot of fighters just try to think about the second fight and how you got to finish it as soon as possible and not get injured and all that. And you kind of forget that you have someone in front of you that you have to beat first. So I try to focus on the first fight. And then obviously I got ready for the second one. But at the end of the day, you never know what's going to happen, right? You might get injured. Things might change. So we'll see. I think a lot of fighters sometimes think about only the first one and they don't even think about the second i think that seems to be the the majority of tournament fighters they're like well what do you think about who you're going to face like well i haven't even thought that far yet so really? i think you're getting two different approaches you, you, you have to th to think of both obviously yeah. but but i don't want to overlook the first fight obviously because i need to get through the but first you want to get out of it as quick as possible or? to me i don't I, I don't feel like i need to get out of it as quick as possible i think that if a knockout is going to come it's going to come by itself if i see an opportunity obviously i'm going to go at it and try to finish the fight as soon as i can but i'm not just going to go in there and, and think like i need to knock him out as soon as i yeah. can so i can go to the final because it might put myself in danger and for the final like i said you might have injuries you might have different stuff which has which i have already prepared like like to me, when I get ready for a fight, I don't. I've, I'm, I'm always on the mindset that I'm, I'm gonna get destroyed. I mean, my legs are gonna be gone, or my arms, or I'm gonna be bleeding. My nose is gonna be bleeding. I'm gonna have one eye closed. I try to put myself in the worst situation as possible in my head. So once it happens in the ring, it's kind of like, yeah, I've, I faced it already. I already know what I have to do if that happens. So I'm never in a position where I don't know what to do. A lot of times you see fighters on the ring they start to lose their thing when they kind of get surprised or they don't know what to do anymore. And this is the kind of thing that doesn't happen with me because I'm ready for kind of any situation. Now, if you don't know Antoine's story, born in France, yeah. raised in Thailand, yes. became one of the best Muay Thai fighters in that country and then yep. came to glory. Just talk about the transition from Muay Thai to kickboxing. What's been the most difficult thing for you? Um, first, first, I think it was the weight class because I used to fight a way lighter weight mm -hmm. class I used to fight for set to 72 to 73 kilograms and I had to jump to 77 straight away which was a huge difference obviously uh, the second hard thing about this transition I, I wouldn't say it's the elbows I would say it's the little breaks you get in Muay Thai like the throws the holding the kind of things like that that slow the pace down or that you can use as like with experience like let's say I would get tired at some point. I would know how to rest. I would know how to turn around, how to hold when I have to, how to put the guy down when I have to. And this is the kind of things that you don't, you can't do in kickboxing because it's nonstop action. So I, I would say that's probably the hardest thing. Because I mean, you'll see two uh, different approaches. Like someone like Sitachai yeah. will stick to his Muay Thai roots yeah. sometime. Uh, then you have some Muay Thai fighters that feel like, you know, we don't really use our boxing as much, so we need to start developing that yeah. side of things. So well, which approach do you take? Um, well, well, it's different different styles, obviously. Uh, Sidisha has always been a very strong fighter that likes to go forward and, and put on fights. So I think that that rest kind of thing wasn't really an issue for him because mm -hmm. he liked to fight that way anyways. Um, for me, obviously, I had to work on my boxing a lot, which I haven't used in the first fight, but maybe I will this time we'll yeah. see but uh, yeah it's just getting getting used to the rules and 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 getting used to a different pace and not like I'm my, my style is more like I like to not fight too much I like to know how to control the fight and know and always be aware and in control of what I'm doing mm -hmm. and I think that this was the hardest thing about switching to kickboxing because so many people put pressure on you, like kickboxing, you have to have nonstop action. You have mm -hmm. to be aggressive, you have to do this and that. And I had to stay calm and, and think like, okay, I still got my own style. 
I can still adapt to all of that without losing myself. And you're known for elbows and stuff. How was that yeah. transition? Yeah, and like I said, so, like, I mean, you have a hundred professional fights. Not only was yeah, he one yeah. of the best Muay Thai fighters, you have over a hundred professional yeah. fights. And you're how old? 27, 26? 26, yeah. So, I mean, that's incredible there. And a lot of your finishes have been with elbows, elbows and amazing yeah. sweeps and dumps. Yeah. Is that something that still is in your mind when you're in the ring? Oh, or? it's not anymore. I've It's been like, it's been what, almost a year now that I've try to get ready just for that and so that, that that's fine but I think it's difficult in a way that um, people are more aware in Muay Thai they don't rush on you like crazy because they know that they might get hit with an elbow or something like that but in kickboxing they would just rush on you without really thinking or something like that because they know they're not gonna get elbowed or they're not gonna be thrown down or stuff like that so that that was the, the hardest part like I said that kind of rush non-stop action could get in your head and try yeah, to change but your style exactly and that, i think that was that that's what happened with leo for the, f the first time because leo's your brother my brother leo yeah because we were trying too much to change his style and adapt to the rules and like i said too many people telling us like you gotta adapt you gotta do this you gotta do that and it was kind of getting out to our heads like yeah we have to change if we want to make it in kickboxing we have to change but really you don't really have to change you just have to adapt let's talk about what's really important here let's talk about women Okay, because in <laughs> really Thailand, important. this guy is, I, wouldn't, I don't want to say an icon, but you're a huge celebrity, right? You have commercials, you yeah. have endorsements, you have two gyms. Yeah. Without being humble, how popular are you there? What's your life like walking down the street in Bangkok, Thailand? Uh, well, usually if we walk down the street, people would come down and try to ask for pictures and, and, and stuff like that. Most, most of the time, like I, I'd say like, two out of 10 people that would come across would come and ask pictures. So 20% of the population knows who you are? Ah, uh, more, more people know who, who me and my brother, not, not just myself, yeah. but, but not everyone, obviously, would dare to come up or ask for pictures. Not everyone would want to have a picture with us. So, yeah. but yeah, but, but we're probably like, especially this year that I've, I've had a lot of commercials and all of that. So it's like my face is kind of everywhere in the city in Bangkok. So so why not just stay in Thailand, try and own that market? Why try and come to a global company like Glory? I, I, f I felt like this, it's, I'm grateful, it's great, but I feel kind of like I've achieved that already because people know me, whatever I do is like, people know what I do there whatsoever. And, and I've had a great career in Thailand already, but I kind of felt like I'm still hungry and I still want to do more and I feel like I still have more in me and I can get more so I felt like why not trying to do it worldwide now I would think with your personality people in Thailand either love you or hate you do you get yeah. a lot of guys that come up and talk smack to you uh, not I think because of the culture people don't disrespect you like in front of you I don't know if it's just there or if it's like everywhere but I've never had anyone come up to me and and say bad things to me, but obviously you got on internet, social media. Yeah, on yeah. social media, you got you, you trolls. You gotta think everywhere. you're a foreigner in another country, right? Yeah. Basically, yeah. so they still treat you as one of their own, yeah. or that, is there that, still kind of. This is why I felt like be, because I'm a foreigner, and and Thailand is a is a country where they're very, they love their own people. They, they 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 just love Thai people, and it's really hard for them to actually love someone from another country, from a foreigner. So I felt like. My brother and I were, were able to achieve that, make them like us or feel like we're one of them. So I felt like if we did that, we accomplished that in a country where it's so hard to yeah. do it, I'm pretty confident we might be able to do it in other countries too. So that's why, that's one of the reasons why we're in glory now. So when you first started climbing the ranks there as a Muay Thai fighter, did you get discriminated against by people saying, we don't want to fight him, he's not Thai, or not, not getting the kind of matchups you deserve? It's not like we don't want to fight him, it's that we couldn't get any fights at all. No one wanted to get us a fight, because it's not like it is nowadays. Nowadays, mm -hmm. Muay Thai is very popular for foreigners to just come to Thailand and get some fights, yeah. but back in the days when we started, it wasn't like that. People would just make fights to bet money, right? And to, and to bet money, you need to have a 50-50% win, right? In order for two people to bet money. But when you have a foreigner, they would just feel like we don't have the blood of a fighter, we don't have the heart of a fighter, so they don't want no foreigners on their card. So it was always so hard for us to get fights. I'd say maybe the first 40 fights I had, it was only just like, you know, they would have like villages fights or te in the temples mm. and stuff like that. We would go to every single event with our suitcase with like the mouse piece and, and our shorts in it, hoping that a fight would cancel and we could just jump in.
Really? Yeah, because they, they wouldn't let us fight. They wouldn't like pick and, a fight. And what for would us. you get paid for a, a village fight? Um, so f how much? It, how much would be like five hundred baht? It, it's ranking, like, right? Based on your level. I yeah, heard based, it's based on your, based on your, level, on your level, you get paid a set kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Like the first few fights was probably like what, like maybe fifteen dollars. <laughs> wow. I get something like that. Yeah. yeah. But but at the time though, when when I was like thirteen, it was good money for there. It was good. It, it was like good to have your own pocket money. You don't have to ask anyone else. You get yeah. your own pocket money. I get to buy my own candies, my yeah. own stuff that I want, and no one can say anything. So I, that was one of the first reasons why I started. And I felt like, this is so good. Yeah. Like, I get my own stuff. I don't have to You know, it's funny anything. you bring up candy. If you ask Joseph Valtellini what a fighter should be eating, you know, leading up to it, you'd be proteins, low carb, whatever you would say. Yeah, it's it's very healthy. Tell them what you eat, honestly. How often do you? I eat, couldn't believe it. How often do you eat it. fast food like McDonald's, it Wendy's? How often? It still stresses I, me out. I eat fast food every single day, at least once a day, every single yeah. day. And I'm not, I'm not saying it's the way to do it, but that's how it is for me. That's how it works. I believe that if your mind is happy, your body is gonna follow. <laughs> so that's so what what's I do. your what's your go-to fast food item? Man, anything, anything Big fat Mac? and greasy, yeah. Quarter pounder of cheese. I see a Burger King. Whopper. Too, yeah. Burger King, yeah, anything. Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's more excited about what he's eating yeah. than his actual fight. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait for a sponsor like in between rounds. You're sitting there eating a KFC yeah, I'm, chicken I'm, wing, going I'm, like this. I'm, for I'm the waiting commercial. for that actually when I when I play video games. I'm waiting for that for that. that well, that you sponsor. have a sponsorship from a yogurt company, yeah, so from maybe a yogurt you company. can start eating. Yeah, some I'm yogurt. the brand ambassador for a yogurt. Wow. Well, hey, man, congratulations on all your success. We, we wish you the <laughs> best you. of luck Saturday right, night. Brother. Thank Glo you. Glory 40, Friday night. Friday Glory night. 44, Chicago. Anything you want to say to all your fans in Thailand and to all the girls that want to date you, but you do have a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, I do yeah, have, you have, have a girl. girlfriend. Sorry. I do have What's a girlfriend. What's your message to them? Yeah. What's your message back. He's What's back. your message to them? Well, I, first of all, I want to like thank everyone for all the support that we get, not just from Thailand, from but from all over the world. It's it's amazing all the messages that we get on social media every single day, even though we might not be replying to every one of you, but thank you, thank you so much for the support. And this is one of the reasons why we are still able to keep going and keep doing it, so thank you. And if you want to get an autographed Glory 44 poster by all of our big stars, including Antoine Pinto, who was the first to sign it, yep. go to gloryshop.com and uh, take a gander, all right? Joseph, any parting shots? You want to obviously hype your oh, gym? Yeah, why not? I'm wearing my bazooka kickboxing shirt, bazooka uh, squad.com. Bazooka squad.com. Bazooka squad.com. Squad. Could I get a shirt, maybe? Your best boy? If you go on my Instagram, oh, I had one today. You're all posing and looking good in it. Yeah, I did. But it's a size <laughs> large. I need an XL. I have a dad bod. I've got a gut. I've got to cover it up. Well, yeah. you're, you're on the Pinto diet. Yeah, 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 you're not, diet. Let's go get some KMC. But you're not on the Pinto training diet. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. Yeah. I got to do the, the workout. Just too. the eating part. All right, thanks for checking out the Glory Podcast. We'll see you at Glory 44 Chicago.